Hey there, today I'm going to show you how to draw Nightmare Foxy from Five Nights at Freddy's 4. So we're going to start with a central location in the face, and that'll be the nose. And this is the area that we're going to start building off from. So let's start with the top of the nose with a slight curve. From here I'm going to draw two lines coming in towards each other, towards the bottom of the nose, and then connecting these two points with a straight line. And then I'm going to color this in black. So this nose will start as a will serve as the starting point for everything else that we build around it. So from here, I'm going to draw the upper lip, which is sort of like a, the endoskeleton of the mouth. So from here, I'm going to draw an upward curve. So from the left to the right, I'll draw a curve up. And from here, I'm going to draw two lines coming down. From here, I'm going to connect these two points with a similar curve that goes up. Now from here, I'm going to draw the bones that kind of connect the mouth to the nose. So what it is, from here, I'm going to curve towards the bottom of the nose, then draw another curve. I'm going to keep drawing these curves until I get to the top, which is three lines. I'm going to draw the same thing on the right side. So I'll just draw a series of curves. And these are sort of like the bones of the ribs of the upper part of the muzzle. So from here, let's go up to the outer part of the nose. So this part here, I'm going to draw an angle going upwards on either side. I'm going to create a bridge from here. I'm going to go across above the nose, and they come down on the right side. And from here, let's draw the whisker area. So on the left side, I'm going to draw a curve going out, but along the way, I'm going to draw these little broken areas. So it doesn't have to match exactly the way that I draw it, but it's basically just a bunch of tears that go across. Let's draw the same thing on the right side. So I'm going to do a curve, but along the way, I'm just going to break it up, these wavy lines. And on either end, I'm just going to turn them up, so like an angled line going up and towards the center of the face. And then from here, I'm just going to curve in towards the upper part of that muzzle. Do the same thing on the right side. Now from here, now we can start building upwards towards the eyes. So here's the center area. I'm going to draw eyes on either end. So starting on the right side, I'm going to draw a curve going up. From here, I'm just going to curve down and tuck this in underneath that cheek area. Draw the same thing on the left side, but then we're just flipping it over. And from here, just curving down towards and underneath that whisker area. From inside, I'm going to draw the eyeballs. So draw these circles on either side, same height, and then just draw the little pin dots in the inside. Now you'll notice that this side, this eye is a little bit shorter than this side, but that's okay because we're going to be coloring this all in black. So start with the right side. And I can correct that error after I've colored the side in. So I've colored that in. Now on the left side here, when I color this in, you'll notice it's a little bit smaller. So I can fix that by just going on the outside and widening it out. So here, I want to kind of go a little bit wider. I'm just going to draw that in and color that in just like that. Now from here, let's draw the sides of the temple. So here, I'm going to curve outwards. Starting on the left side, going up in towards the eye, and just above the eye I'll stop there, and then I'm going to draw a curve for the top of the head, but in the middle here I'm going to draw a fissure that goes across the head into that left eye. I'm going to curve up, from here I'm just going to draw a bunch of jaggedy lines that go to that eye, and now from here I'm going to jag them out to continue the side on the right side of the head, like that. From here, this top corner, I'm just going to draw an angled line going down towards the right, and color all this in black. This will give it a little bit of perspective to that crack. And if you want, you can do this now or later, but go ahead and just draw a bunch of just jaggedy lines where the black is, and I'm going to draw a couple little holes. And it can be just any shape, any size you want. I'll just draw a few there. So let's get into the ears. Now these are ears that are partially broken, so you start to see the inner skeleton of those ears. I'll draw a line like this on either end. This is a starting point for the ears. From here I'm going to curve to the tip of the ear on the top and on the bottom, doing the reverse curve. I'll do the same thing on the left side. So I'll find that point, curve down, and on the bottom as well. Now from here I'm going to draw a crack from the bottom here to the top. So again, just doing some jagged lines across. I'll do some more jagged lines this way doesn't really matter where you put them, just kind of put them kind of across the ear. And then I'm just going to trim 
the areas where there's no crack just slightly inside of the outer line. From here, I'm going to draw a trim on the inner side, kind of all the way around here. And then this way, I'm just going to draw a couple bars going across. So two lines here, I'm going to leave a bit of a gap. Two more lines, leave a gap, and two more lines like that. So the same thing on this side. Now I'll make it even more simpler for you. After you've drawn the crack, so you draw a crack like this, like that, all you need to do is draw the inner trim of that ear. And I should have done that with the first ear here, but just to show you what this looks like. So here's the trim. I'm going to draw a couple bars going across on the inner side of that ear, kind of like that. Now to attach the ears to the head, all I'm, all I'm going to do is draw two lines just joining the head. If you want, you can go in and draw some exposed wires coming out pretty much anywhere you want. It doesn't really need to, again, match up with what I've drawn, but just draw them in like that. Let's get into the teeth. So there's a big row of teeth along the top here. So I'm going to start with the center one. So in the middle here, I'm going to draw one kind of elongated V. And I just continue that same length and shape all the way across till I get to probably around there. And then I'll continue on the left side all the way across there. Now let's get into the lower jaw. So the mouth is going to be open. So I'm going to draw the inner part of the mouth first. So right about here, draw a curve going out on both sides. And then they're going to converge towards the center area. So here, I'm going to curve inwards. On the right, I'll do the same. And then connecting these two points with an upward curve. Now from here, you can go ahead and draw the teeth. So here, I'm going to start on the left side and just draw some upside down Vs. I could probably fit four in here. Then I'm going to go along the edge here as well. So I'm going to go upwards. Same length teeth going all the way up. Do the same thing on the left side. Just going all the way up to the top. Now he's got this inner part that's got some teeth as well. So what I'm going to do inside here is I'm going to draw a curve that goes up like this and draw some teeth along that line. Just like that. I know he's got a lot more teeth than that, but that's all I can probably fit in for now. In the negative space, so which is in a tooth, I'm going to color that in all black. So you can go ahead and take your time and color this in. Make sure you don't color the teeth. Going in, coloring the inside of the mouth. All the way back. Even on the sides here. Let's go down to the front. Just finish this off. So we got that. Now let's draw the outer part of the mouth. So all I'm going to do is just trace the outer part of the inner part of the mouth. So from here, it's going to follow that same contour all the way around to the bottom here and then just finish off the bottom jaw with a curve like that. Now there's some bars and brackets that hold the jaw together, so I'm just going to start up on the left side here. Just draw a curve and make that twice as thick. Draw a curve on the right, make that twice as thick. Okay, so now we got the head. Let's get into the upper torso area. So right about here, I'm going to have the body sort of turn this way. So high shoulder on this side, low shoulder on that side. So let's start with the high side. So we're going to curve out. And on the bottom side, I'm just going to curve down. So you can see that the angle sort of curved this way. For the shoulder socket, all I'm going to do is work my way to where the rib cage would be. And just draw, again, some squiggly lines all the way down on one side. And then broken squiggly lines on the right. From this side, I'm going to come down to where it's all broken. So here's where the rib cage would end. This side, I'm just going to curve down. This side, I'm going to curve down. Now, from the middle here, all I'm going to do is, again, create that same broken line. So, I'm just going to break this up. In the center of his chest, it's a little bit higher and a little bit more decayed. So, I'm going to go across like that. And then inside, just drawing some shapes. Maybe some holes. Some smaller, some larger. All the way around. Okay, so there's the upper torso. Let's get into the left side first before we get to the rest of the body. Here on this side, I actually want to draw a bit of the shoulder piece. So here, I'm just going to draw a squiggly line across. 
From here, I'm going to round out the top and then squiggle this line down to connect with that bottom part there. So this is a, just a section of that shoulder. I'm going to draw the arm. So this is the upper arm here. So I'm going to draw, again, some broken lines going across down this way. Let's draw the two sides of the arm. So here I'm going to curve in one direction, and the bottom I'm going to curve in the other direction. And along here, again, I'm just going to do a series of broken lines, go across. And if you want, you can draw some holes as you're doing this. Just draw a few holes here and color them in black. I'm going to draw the connector points after I've done all the limbs. So here, let's get the forearm down this way. So I'm going to break some lines up, going across. I'm going to curve on either side down to the wrist. Then again, going in the upper opposite direction, some broken lines like that. Now let's draw the hook. So here's the connector piece, so a straight line across. I'm going to connect that with a curve. That. There's a little bit of a nub here, so I'm just going to draw another smaller curve like that. Now from here, the hook is going to come down. It's quite large. So I'm going to start on the left side. I'm the outer part of the hook first. So coming down and then rounding out, almost like a circle to a point. Now all I have to do is go to the right and just trace that same shape and then come into a point. So I taper to a point here. Now to draw the connector pieces, I'm going to keep this very simple in here. I'm just going to draw two lines like that. Here, I'm going to draw two lines connecting. Here, I'm going to draw a line going on the top and a line coming through the bottom. As simple as that. Now, if you want, you can draw the back side of these limbs by just going on the back side behind those posts and just drawing a swiggly line and then coloring that all in black. You can see that you get sort of like a 3D effect. Here, I'm going to draw that same thing. So just some squiggly lines behind that post. Again, coloring that all in black, like that. And here, I probably want to give a little depth to the shoulder, so I'll squiggle this line on this side, color that in black. And over here, I'll just kind of, just kind of squiggle that line behind here, like so. And on this side, I'll probably just show a little bit of depth, just thickening up the bottom side there. Actually, I'll probably go ahead and fill that in as well. Okay, so there's the one arm there. Now, if I'm going a little bit too fast, you can always pause rewind and start up again and get caught up. Let's get to the arm on the right. So here, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put a shoulder pad here. I'm going to just draw the arm straight. So this arm is going to come down in this direction. So I'm just going to break up the edge of the shoulder or the upper arm, curve down on both sides, and then again, breaking up that edge, draw a couple like spots and some holes, some rotting holes there. Let's get the forearm. So I'm going to have the forearm coming down this way. So again, breaking up the upper edge, curving both sides down towards the wrist. And then again, just breaking up that edge there, add a couple of holes. Now for the hand, again, I'm going to keep this simple. Let's draw the wrist. So the upper part right here, so with a curve like that, let's draw the thumb here. So the thumb is going to get attached in here, so I need to make a socket. So I'm going to draw a little line and draw sort of a backward C. And I'm going to curve up. From here, I'm going to curve the knuckle area, so right about here, and connect these two points with a curve, just like that. Now from here, let's draw this thumb in. So here, I'm just going to draw two lines coming out and a straight line across. Here, I'm going to draw a curve and then a straight line connecting that. Now here, it's basically almost like a point, but it's got a little bit of a, a knot in it. So here I'm going to draw sort of an elongated oval. On one side I'm going to draw a line through it. And on the other side I'll draw the other side to a point. Connect this with just two lines like that. Now for the rest of the fingers here I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. So drawing a line out, straight across, and curving that underneath the knuckles. Going straight across, curving that. So I'm doing a series of overlaps three times. And I believe he's got three fingers and one thumb. So from here, I'm just going to draw these little curves. So one going down here, one going down in that direction, and the other sort of going out straight. Now to do the same thing here, all I need to do is do that elongated oval, and then draw that point behind it. And here I'll draw that elongated oval with a point behind, and here as well to a point, just like that. And let's do the connectors in between. So here I'm going to draw two posts. 
Here I'm going to draw two posts, and then here I'm going to just aim that right into the body there. Here I'm going to draw the back side of that shoulder. So here I'm going to color that in black. All this area in here I'm going to color in black, just like that. And the upper arm, I'll just draw the back side of that, color that in. Again, you don't have to match exactly how I draw these curves. You can just make it your own and do the shapes exactly how you want it. And back here, I'll just show a little bit of the inside underneath. Okay, so we got the upper torso, we got the arms. Let's get into the mid mid section. So here is where I want to start the lower torso. So across this way, I'm just going to draw again a bunch of jagged lines and round up the hips. So two curves going in towards each other. This is going to come down to the lower torso here. So again, breaking this up, some jaggedy lines. And then from here, I'm just going to curve up to connect them. Let's draw some holes in here. Some larger ones here, just like that. Now the spine that connects this, again, to keep this very simple, all I'm going to do is draw one line, and I'll draw a thick sort of a bar in between. And in between, I'm just going to curve these lines to create the spine, come like that. Let's draw the back side of the lower torso. So back here, I'm starting on the left. I'm just going to wiggle this line behind that spine and continue on the right side. I'm going to go ahead and color this in black. Go on the right side and color that in black. Let's draw the back side of the upper torso. So here, starting on the left, I'm going to break this down, go behind the spine, continue on the right side, and go ahead and color this all in black. Okay, so we've got that there. Now, this is probably a good time to go back in and start adding some loose wires. So just some squiggly lines coming out of the open, exposed areas here. Go on the hips, this one right there as well. Okay, so we got that. Let's get into the legs, starting with the one on the left. Here, exactly like I've done with the arms, the connector here to the upper thigh, I'm just gonna break up that edge. Leg's gonna come down this way, so I'll draw the top and then the bottom curve. And again, breaking up the leg like so, then adding some deep holes of various sizes across. Now the shin is gonna come down this way, but this is all endoskeleton. So let's start with the knee. With the knee, I'm just gonna build a rectangle. Start that, and then from here, I'm gonna come out and round out the edges. And then this is the shin, and then connect that with a straight line. I'm gonna repeat this seven times all the way down. So drawing the curves, and a straight line to connect. And again, I wanna make sure that I'm keeping the sides aligned on either side. So curve, straight line, curve, straight line. And I'll go all the way down to the bottom. So, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm counting this because I want to make sure I draw the exact same number on the right side. So we got that. Here to connect this, I'm just going to draw a bar going in an angle in line with that thigh. Draw a line this way and then straight in underneath that thigh. And again, I'm going to just split this with some lines, just like I did with the spine here. Let's get into the bottom. Uh, the ankle. So here I'm just going to draw a smaller rectangle just to kind of get it to taper down lower. Then here I'm going to draw a smaller, taller rectangle. Either side, I'll just do a couple bolts. Now the feet get a little bit tricky, but I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible. So I'm going to start with the back heel. So drawing an angled line in the behind that ankle bone. From this way, the foot's going to come this way. So I'm going to go across and curve up. This way, I'm going to curve and go up. Connecting these two points with a straight line. So, here I'm going to come down straight. The heel, I'll come down straight. I'm going to connect these two points by going up and then across. Now let's draw the toe. So he's got some sharp toes. So here I'm going to go across following this same line. Now here, I'm going to draw the socket and goes to a point. I'll draw a line just to close that off. I'm going to repeat this four times. Cross like that, 
So rounding that off, I'm going to a point. Rounding that off, going to a point. Here, I'm just going to drop this straight down. Okay, so there's a very simple foot. Let's get into some detail, some connectors. So for the hip, two lines. And I'm going to draw a little bit of thickness, a little bit of depth behind there, up here. And then also on the thigh behind the endoskeleton leg, just like that. Let's get into the final leg here. Same, exact same thing. I'm going to flip this over. So starting with the top, breaking up the edge, curving the back and then the front of the thigh, breaking up that edge towards the knee. And then draw a few holes here, like that. Now with the kneecap, again, drawing the rectangle first, just like that. And then now taking that and drawing the series of seven sort of bones across this way. So rounding up the edge and connecting with a straight line all the way down. So I'm making sure that I've done seven across just to make sure I got the right exact same length. So that's six. Final one, seven, across like that. Let's draw exactly what I see here, here. So the rectangle. Elongating rectangle with the two bolts on either side. Let's go ahead and draw the knee connector first. So two angle lines going in line with that thigh. Angle line across this way. Just like that. And then just splitting it off here. Let's draw that connector here while we're at it. Now let's take that foot and put it on this side. So again, flipping this over, we can draw the angle line going that way. Let's draw the top of the foot first. So coming straight in angle and then curving out. This is going to go in the same angle and then curve in the opposite direction. Connect that with a straight line. Take this corner, drop it down. Take this corner, drop it down. And go across. And then as I get to the end, I'll curve this down. Now, from here, I'm going to take this corner and just pull it out. And I'll do like I did here. Put the socket to the point and connect it like that. And do this four times. And overlapping as I go all the way to the end. Take this point and drop it down. Now let's draw a little bit of depth behind this knee. So just drawing the back side of that thigh. Up here I'm just going to color this in roughly just to show a little bit of depth there. And again you can go in, draw some wires. Some loose wires here. Doesn't have to be perfect. There are some wires that connect the knee to the ankle. So I'm going to go here and draw a wavy line going towards that ankle. If you want, you can make it twice as thick so you can color it in later. Like that. Draw one more on this side like this. So twice as thick. Let's do the same thing on the left side, so coming around. Again, it doesn't have to match my shape. It can be your shape. You can make it a new shape that you want. Going up like that. And if you want, you can go and do a lot more detail by adding more cracks, more you know, more fissures or even stitch marks like this, kind of like that. That looks kind of cool, so I'm going to draw one more here. And that's pretty much it. There we have it. There's Nightmare Foxy from Five Nights at Freddy's 4. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please give us a like, share this with your friends, and make sure you check out our FNAF playlist. We have a ton of characters in there. I also make a couple animated shorts that I hope you enjoy. I know they're short, but I'll be making more in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.